having a little bit of protein before bed, like 90 minutes before bed, has been demonstrated to have some decent effects when it comes down to building muscle. Now it's kind of controversial because is the amount of protein you have over the course of the day all that really matters? Well, there was a study that was published in the International Journal of Exercise Science that took a look at people that were resistance training. They were pretty experienced lifters and it looked at them over the course of eight weeks and it found that when they had 54 grams of casein protein in the morning versus 54 grams of casein protein 90 minutes before bed, there was no real change. Well, if you look carefully at the data, you'll see that the morning group gained 0.4 kilograms of lean body mass and the evening protein group gained 1.2 kilograms of lean body mass. So definitely gained more muscle, but here's the big question. Is it going to stop fat loss? Like, if you were to eat protein before bed to try to prevent muscle wasting and build muscle in general, is it going to stop fat loss? And at first it would make sense that it would, right? Because so much of us look at this as, well, how long is my overnight fast? My overnight fast when I am not eating, my body doesn't have much to tap into, so it's probably burning fat and more than likely not burning muscle. So if I stop eating at 7 p.m. and I don't eat again until 7 a.m., I have a 12-hour overnight fast in which I am tapping into fat reserves. So the more that I, the closer that I eat before bed, that's two hours that I'm not burning fat, right? If I ate at 9 p.m. and had 50 grams of protein, well, I just lost two hours of my overnight fast. But the literature says otherwise. The Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition published a paper looking at just this. They found that protein before bed did not change the morning, what is called respiratory quotient. It did not change the level of fat oxidation. So even though protein was consumed before bed, it just, it didn't affect. They were still oxidizing fat. Their respiratory quotient was still the same as if they hadn't consumed food. That is really promising. That means that we could have protein and it wouldn't really, like it would make us build muscle, help us build muscle, but we wouldn't stop fat loss. Super cool. The other thing that's even more important to look at is how it impacted insulin. Having protein before bed didn't have any impact on fasting insulin levels. Now, if you were to have carbohydrates before bed, you would almost certainly notice a difference in your fasting insulin because you would have carbohydrates before bed, insulin would go up and it would probably come down a little bit and then it would do its secondary spike. And by the time you wake up, your insulin levels might still be high. Here's the deal. If your insulin levels are elevated, that will likely impede fat loss. I'm not saying having carbs before bed is magically gonna make you not burn fat. You're probably fine even if you did that realistically, but if your insulin levels are elevated, it is somewhat of a proxy of inhibiting fat loss because if insulin is elevated, it's really hard for fat loss to occur because insulin impedes the action of these fat burning processes, the enzymes like hormone sensitive lipase and whatnot that actually break triglycerides down into fatty acids to be burned. So this is good news on the protein side of things. Now, some protein, depending on what you combine it with, might impact your blood sugar. It might impact your insulin. You do have to look at these things. One of the things that you could do is monitor your glucose before you go to bed. And I know some people will say glucose monitoring is a dead end street. I disagree when it comes down to optimizing your timing of food intake. The last thing I want to have is a glucose spike before bed because it's going to impede my sleep, which is probably the most important thing for my muscle building and fat loss over even my nutrition. If I'm not sleeping, it doesn't matter what I'm eating, I'm not getting the full effect, right? So I look at my glucose very, very closely with that. Now, as far as fat loss is concerned too, Although a continuous glucose monitor or measuring my glucose isn't gonna tell me where my insulin's at, I'm going to see where my glucose is at. And in a healthy, normal functioning individual, if your glucose goes up, you can expect your insulin to go up too. So I think using like a continuous glucose monitor to see what different foods impact you, that would be a great way to determine what would be the least fat loss impeding food that you could have. Maybe you have whey protein and berries and it completely messes you up but you have cottage cheese with a little bit of whey protein mixed in it and you feel fine. I put a link down below for Cygnos. That way you can get a continuous glucose monitor. I would recommend you try it out. A lot of times it's difficult for people to get a CGM, 
but Cygnos makes it really easy. You can get a continuous glucose monitor so you can Bluetooth in real time. You can look at your overall glucose levels and what's happening when you eat certain foods. Cygnos is also now using the new Dexcom G7 meter, which is really, really cool, super advanced, and much quicker and better than kind of the previous CGMs. But Cygnos also kind of gives you these tips and coaching systems. So it's, hey, your blue glucose is spiking. Uh, this is a bad thing before bed. You need to get your glucose down. Or hey, don't eat right now. It's too close to bed. Or hey, did you just exercise? Your glucose is doing X, Y, Z. It really paints a picture. Even if you only wore it for a few months, just to get an idea of how you respond to different foods, particularly at night, it is worth it. That link down below is a special discount link. So it gets you the continuous glucose monitor, the Dexcom G7, and then also gets you, of course, access to Cygnos so you can kind of have the real-time effect in Bluetooth and real-time food monitoring and glucose monitoring. So that link down below in the top line of the description. Now, if you're trying to find the ideal kind of protein to have before bed, most of the literature is suggesting that a casein protein is going to be the best in this case. Now, if you're sensitive to milk, casein's probably not gonna work, in which case you may want something a little bit easier to digest, but something that's still gonna be sustained release. The problem with having something like a big steak right before bed is the digestive load is heavy. So when you have to digest something really hard, that's going to be what kind of triggers your heart rate to go up. You're diverting a lot of blood to digestion, and this will impact your sleep. If you've ever had a big meal, you've gone out to eat, and then you go to bed, that's what can really make it so that you don't sleep well. It's less about the overall calories, the protein, it's more about how much is going into digestive load. That along with the glucose spike, of course. So with casein protein, if you do not have a sensitivity to dairy, it's relatively easy to digest as far as the amount of blood that's probably going to be required, even though it digests slowly. Whey protein absorbs very fast. So not exactly what you'd want to have right before bed unless you mixed it with yogurt or you mixed it with cottage cheese where it would slow the digestion down. When you slow down the digestion, you're making it so you're having a sustained release of a couple of things. A, the amino acids like leucine, which are the biggest drivers of muscle protein synthesis, but B, you're also having tryptophan and a sort of melatonin sustained release. Tryptophan is what goes to the brain and ultimately converts into serotonin and converts into melatonin and helps you sleep. So there's benefits to having dairy as your protein source before bed when it comes down to a sustained sort of muscle building effect. But now that we know that having it before bed is not going to impede fat loss as long as there's not a glucose spike or an insulin spike, it's fair game. But I don't recommend doing it every night. I do recommend having some nights where you let yourself have a longer fast. For example, I typically stop eating by 6.30 p.m., at the latest, 7. And then I don't really eat again usually until like 8 a.m. after my workout. So I'm almost invariably doing at least 13 hours. But occasionally, if my protein demand is higher, I will eat I don't know, an hour before bed and have some cottage cheese, or I'll have some milk protein, which is now available. You can find places that have straight milk protein, a combination of whey and casein protein. As always, keep it locked here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.